Welcome to GoGo Gadget. This is Namdi, a new channel here. And uh, to actually kick things off with this new channel is the presentation of the LG V20. So before I kind of just get started, this is not an unboxing. I'm sure you've seen plenty of those videos. So this is more about getting an in-depth review of the V20. Now, this is a device that's just been making a lot of noise. A lot of people have been talking about the LG V20 and for good reason. I mean, LG has sold 200,000 of these users within 10 days, actually. Um, so kudos for LG for, for kind of just taking advantage of the withdrawal of the Note 7 and trying to fill that gap. Now, um, I, I really got interested with this device when I started hearing more people talk about this device. Most of the reviews that I've heard have been good reviews, but however, there were some contrary um, and controversial reviews actually. And so we'll kind of take a dive into it, but um, I kind of wanted to give my own take considering that you know, people have been talking about this phone, so I wanted to make sure um, if my critique matched up with what I've been hearing. Now, let's be, you know, a little bit fair here. I can be a hard critic for several reasons. One, um, I don't like to shower devices with too much praises because it allows these manufacturers to become complacent and it allows them to stop being innovative. Two, if you're paying $800 for a device, I think, you know, it's, we should do due diligence as consumers and purchasers to be able to take advantage of these product products. And you want something that gives you the best bang for the buck. Um, you know, if you're talking about a device that's pushing close to $1,000, you want to be able to use this device to do pretty much anything that you want. So, um, with that said, we'll get right into it. Um, like I said, the LG V20 um, really piqued my curiosity because I I heard a lot of people, you know, mentioning it as a Note 7 replacement in terms of specs, features. Um, we won't jump too much into the specs because uh, according to this is November 22nd, so I'm assuming that you know everything you need to know about this phone in terms of specs, right? So um, my main focus was really just kind of just to jump into what people have been talking about and to kind of discover if what they're saying is true. Uh, so now one thing I have noticed is a lot of the reviews, people tend to be loyalists to manufacturers, which can sometimes make their reviews a little bit biased and skewed. And I get that. And then you have people who have been reviewing the device after two, three days of use and they're still falling into that whole excitement mode. And I think sometimes it skews your input as well. So I've had the LG V20 for close to two weeks now. So I, I, I wanted this review to be a more in-depth analysis. That's why I wanted to wait before I did this review. So you guys at home can kind of see from, um, from an actual user you know uh, what to expect from the V20 if you haven't purchased it already. Now, with that said, you know I um, I came from the S7 Edge, beautiful device, but usability was crap um, because of that Edge screen that kind of I think spoiled my experience. Downgraded and got the Note 5, which I think is an excellent device, and I have been using that as my main driver. All right, so now let's see if the V20 does a good job of influence me enough to be able to use it as my replace use and replace it um, over the Note 5 as my main driver. There's been a lot of um, talk about this device. Let's see if it lives up to the hype. Now, now let's get right into it. I really want to talk about the bad stuff about this phone first before we actually get into the good stuff and the pros. Um, now when I say bad, I actually mean cons. Every device has a con. Um, there is no perfect device. And I always tell people, you make sure you want to make a priority list. If a device meets all of those prior priorities that you have on your list, then you have a perfect device. But in general, there is no perfect device. Um, so I, I always want to call this, what were you thinking moment with LG? The LG V20 comes with a quad DAC audio system, which means that it puts out 
great audio files for people who appreciate listening to music or just audio files in general. Now, the thing about it is, LG does not allow you to experience that out of the box because the device does not come with those B&O headphones. Now, remember, you need high quality headphones to be able to experience that sound. So, out of the box, one of the top best features of this device is the sound output, but you can't experience that out of the box. So, LG automatically disqualifies themselves from capturing the consumer and tapping into that great experience that they've created for people who want to experience that great sound. Now, like I said, that's bad marketing because you have to go through a third party promotion to be able to get those earphones, which I feel like uh, kind of sucks a little bit. Now, one thing you have to, people have to keep in mind is the phone is $800 or more or less, depending on where you get it from. That includes the earphones. You have to keep that in mind. So if you decide, you know, I, I don't want to purchase the earphones or you're just too lazy or, you know, it's just not a biggie for you. Remember, you, you paid for those earphones. You paid for that device. LG does not give you an option or Verizon does not give you an option on a T-Mobile, AT&T, Sprint, wherever your network provider is or Amazon, wherever you put the device, they don't allow you to purchase it separately or say, you know what, I just want the phone for 600 or I want the phone and the headphones for 750 No, you pay a flat fee and that fee is inclusive with the assumptions that you're purchasing the earphones. So if you don't get the earphones, that means you're spotting LG $150 or $125, however, how much those earphones are worth. So if you don't even plan on using the earphones, go for that promotion and get it anyway, because that's something you paid for. All right. Now it's November 22nd. Um, I think that that promotion ended on the 21st. So if you haven't already, you know, went for that promotion for the earphones, you're probably out of luck. So that's probably bad marketing on LG's part. It, the funny thing is LG always tends to make good devices, but always kind of sucks in the marketing department. And I think a lot of times that does affect the products that they put out, but hey, you know, it's, it is what it is. The other thing about this device is, once again, I think it's relative to what I mentioned earlier about the quad DAC. Now, LG did something different, something that nobody else has done. And like I said, it's put a quad DAC on this device that allows you to listen to um, hi-fi audio output on this device. Now, once again, they don't allow you to experience the potential that they tapped in by integrating that technology in this device. Why? Because it only has a single down firing speaker on this device. Now, why would you do that, LG? Now, if you think about it, it's almost like building a Ferrari and putting a V6 engine in it. Or in, in, in this case, they built a Toyota Camry and put a V12 engine in it. it you just limited something that just made this phone great or gave it a potential to be great by giving it a single down forward, down firing speaker. Now, if LG really wanted to be bold, step outside of the box, they could have, you know, put a speaker here, speaker here, and then get this speaker at the bottom as well. So put three speakers on here. Because you're right, I'm not always a big fan of just having both speakers on the front because if your phone is flipped over and let's say you're laying in the bed um, and somebody calls, you can't quite hear the sound because it's muffled. So, um, you know, I they might want to think about that. All right. So, I mean, those are some of the things I have you know, a few of the wipes about. Also, there were reviews that the lens on the back were cracking and I haven't experienced that but then again I did leave the plastic film on the back now it didn't really bother me to do that because it does not interfere with the lens actual lens in front of the camera itself so you don't have to worry about your images being distorted or anything like that now since we are on the topic of marketing bad marketing to be exact 
here's another downfall in a marketing category by LG, right? So once again, they keep limiting themselves in areas where the phone actually excels. We talked about the quad DAC and how that's one of the key features and selling points for the LG V20 that a lot of people can look at and say, okay, you know what? That's actually something that nobody else has. So another thing is now, LG right now, as you know, is the only manufacturer still making devices with a removable battery. That's a selling point for people, right? So why don't you capitalize on the LG, put a bigger battery on here. Now, granted, it's not that much of a big of a deal, but um, I think it will help. But here's where I think they really fell short with the marketing is because when you ship these devices, ship it with an extra battery and a charging cradle. That's how you take advantage of one of the pivotal features of this device. So people can, everything is all about capturing that experience out of the box. Don't make people have to go through third parties or wait for stuff to be able to experience this phone as a whole. Like with the quad deck, they have to wait for the earphones just to hear a feature that you've already, already implemented with the phone. Same thing with this device. It comes with a replaceable battery, right? So LG, why don't you just ship you know, an extra battery and the charging cradle with this device. So, um, you know, it's it's going the extra route to do this. Um, you know, of course, I, I, I did this right because I, I, I wanted to get the full experience of this device if I was going to do an actual honest in-depth review. And I will have to say that this is a necessity. Get you a cradle. Now... I don't think this is officially released on LG's website, So, but you can go on Amazon and eBay and pick you one of these. It can cost you anywhere from $50 to $70. And these typically take about 2 hours and 30 minutes to charge. But trust me, once you have this bad boy charged up and you're using this yourself on your phone, it's dying. Swap that one out. Put that on a charge while it's charging. You're on that bad boy. So that, 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 really, that really helps. Here's another fail, guys. Now, this is not technically an LG issue. This is more specific to your network providers. Now, of course, as you know, I have this, this device with Verizon. Now, some of the great features of this phone are things like um, you can see recently uninstalled apps, which is kind of cool. So if you uninstall something and let's say you're trying to get it back, the device will show you a list of items that have been released within 24 to 48 hours. And also it has the smart settings. Smart settings is kind of cool. So it will trigger certain functionalities based on certain rules. So if I'm at home, I can tell it, hey, if you detect my geographic location, turn on my Wi-Fi. If I step, step away from that geographic location, turn off my Wi-Fi. That comes in handy for me because I'm always toggling my Wi-Fi off and on. If you have Verizon, those settings are automatically stripped off. The uninstalled, uh, recently uninstalled apps is gone. The smart settings is gone. Now, Verizon has been doing this with LG devices, maybe Samsung devices as well, for a couple of years now. Not sure why. There is uh, uh, some, you know, some suggestion that you no know, LG charges network providers based on certain features that come through the device, especially if it's features that ties into their network functionality or, or their network usage, then Verizon can kind of just dictate what features they want on it or not. Now, hence, that's probably why the V20 was cheaper on Verizon than it is with any other network provider. It, I think it's 672 on Verizon, and it's be, probably because that LG, what I'm sorry, well, Verizon opted to not have features like the smart settings now that's just you know uh, 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 educated guess based on some things that I've read that you know that manufacturers charge network providers based on features that's kind of interesting but hey you might want to do your own work and see if that if that's actually true or not all right so now let's 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 get into some of the good stuff so with that said, I mean, I, I do have additional cons, but those are not as 
as major as the ones that I've named. I, I, I do wish that they put a big battery into this. Not, not really much of, of a biggie. I have experienced a little bit of lag here and there after using it close to, to two weeks. But every device will have lag. To 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 just to just summarize that, you will have network junk on there. You will have manufacturer junk on there. So all of that stuff can weigh down on a device performance. Now that's why the Pixel's vanilla operating system is so smooth and so fast is because for you know Google can regulate what goes on that device. That device is proprietary to them. So just keep that in mind. But. Uh, I adjusted my animation effect to be a half second quicker. Uh, if you want to know how to do that, drop a you know question in the comments and I'll, and I'll tell you how. So, but overall, it's been pretty smooth and pretty quick. So nothing for me to complain about. In in terms of uh, one more con, I do wish that LG. Yes, your marketing sucks and it's crap, and I think you guys need to address that because you make good products. But uh, marketing kind of, I think, negates some of that progress that you make with, you know, products during upgrades and releasing good items. I, I do think that the front camera on this device is nothing compared to anything else's on the market. It's just not that up to par. However, like I said, make a priority list. Whatever fits your priority, if it's front camera, then you may want to critique this device a little bit more harder than anybody else but now front camera selfie cameras is really now on my top priority list so it doesn't take that much toll on this device but I think for them to make a device that a lot of people can appreciate they will probably on the next go around whether it's the V30 I don't know if that's what it's going to be called I would consider that they make that front camera a lot better for people because once again, you have to pay attention to your audience. Now, I understand that this device is for content creators. And if you think about it, everywhere that this device excels is in departments that you would use this while you were creating content or media. And taking selfies is more of a personalization, a social aspect of the phone, and not really tied to content creator. And that's probably why, you know, LG didn't focus too much on it. But I, I think it wouldn't have hurt them to put an 8 megapixel camera on here. Or maybe if you put 5 meg megapixel, um, you just kind of just increase the lens size or play around with, around with it some more just to make it you know better than what it is now LG I was kind of disappointed but uh, with that said overall what I think about the device especially knowing that you know I've I've tested some of these other devices the Google Pixel and and the G5 and you know the S7 Edge and S7 now like I said the the Note 5 is my daily driver. It's a very well-built design. And that's probably why Samsung used it as the blueprint and the foundation for the Note 7. And that's why a lot of people like the Note 7. So, the V20 will have to impress me to kind of influence me away from the Note 5 to get this V20. See, does it really justify that price tag that's on this device? Overall, uh, I would have to say... Welcome back, LG. So, for the past couple of years, they've kind of been on that mediocre range in regards to Samsung devices, Apple devices, and even the OnePlus 3, uh, you know, is, is a pretty good device. And then you have Z, you know, the ZTE Axon. These companies are starting to make good devices, and I think LG was kind of just getting lost by just keep making these mediocre devices. The V10 was an alright device. It was pretty good the g5 i think was a disappointment in a lot of people's eyes uh, with that whole modular ideology but with this device i uh, hate kind of you know giving sucking up to the compliments but I, I i give credit where it's due lg did a phenomenal job with this device so welcome back you are finally uh, a major player again this device i think overall does a lot of things well. I talked about the cons, but we'll jump into the good stuff about this phone. The the, the thing that uh, 
I've seen a lot of reviews, a lot of, a few people kind of wasn't really much of a complaint where people were saying they didn't like that the fingerprint scanner button was on the back because they felt like then they had to put the phone up to be able to get into the phone by access and the fingerprint scanner. Now, as you know, LGG for a long time and maybe they were even probably the first to integrate this knock knock feature. So I don't have to go through the back of my phone to turn my phone on. I can just tap it on and the phone turns on. So now that, like I said, that's something that LG has been doing for some time. And I think it really does uh, help and make things um, a lot more convenient, especially when you have people, you know, who like to use their phone flat on a, a desk or on a bed. Um, you know, this, this, this may come very handy for those people. So that, that, that's something that you really have to think about when you're buying a device is convenience, uh, accessibility, you know, all of those, I think ties into a user's, uh, ability and the experience to enjoy the device, especially once again, if you're paying six, six seven hundred, eight hundred dollars for the device, right? All right. So. Now, one of the cons that I didn't mention, left it out on purpose, of course, a lot of people have been complaining about that LG has been doing for a while, and I think it's probably the only section or the, the only critique that they have not been listening to customers is the UI. Now, LG has kind of been driving this ugly cartoonish UI for a long time, and I don't know one person that like, okay, wait, one person, I'm, I think one person I've heard that actually don't mind the UI, but I, I think that LG has to do some about the UI. It wasn't really a big deal for me because really all I did was I used their inbuilt the theme that they had, changed up the wallpaper, and kind of just added like my own icons here. So, uh, you know, so that 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 kind of solved it for me. And then, like I said, LG the the device the V twenty has this uh, pumpkin black theme that comes with the device that you can set it to from the theme store and then everything else like I said is it's really icons that you can import onto your phone so kind of just makes everything a lot more aesthetically appealing in my eyes now let's talk about the display because I, I this was one of the things that was controversial that I was talking about so I, I wanted to clear the air so my listeners can understand what's going on here and what the whole controversy is about. So I'm, let me pick this thing up right here. All right. So let's 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 talk about this uh, uh, for a bit here. So the thing is now, granted, um, I've used a couple of the uh, a lot of the the Samsung devices. I'm a big fan of AMOLED and Super AMOLED. Now the device itself the LG V20 puts out an excellent display so this is where the confusion comes in because you know people are just like well people keep saying the display is very nice but then they're saying it's no super AMOLED and you know it's dim and all of this stuff it's so here's what's happening when you're looking at an IPS display especially with the one that LG puts on the device because I think they put some of the best IPS displays on the devices it looks really really good you forget that you are looking at an IPS display it's just everything is flat the colors and um, you know the tones are more natural that's the upside the uptick of IPS displays everything is more realistic whereas on AMOLED everything is more saturated it has that matrix fantasy vivid colors look which is not realistic however that punch makes it more alluring to the eyes and it's kind of cool i mean makes things more vivid that's what people like i i, I personally like myself now the only thing is once you start comparing them that's where you see the difference so once you're looking at an IPS display like the like the one that's on this LG V20, once you put it next to a Samsung device with a Super AMOLED screen, that's when you know it is that there's probably different, and it's not as I guess intense that you would want the IPS to look like. So that's the only thing is when you put them side by. Outside of that, 
once you look at this device, you become very attached to the output from the IPS and you don't see anything that's better than it. You don't consider any other screen that's better than this device. Like I said, I think what a lot of people are doing is that a lot of people that are used to AMOLED screens, they're putting these phones side by side and then they're saying, oh, well, yeah, the colors are different. This is more, the Super AMOLED is definitely better. Like I said, I mean, I do have my preferences, but this device, the screen, um, the display on this device is really, really nice. And I think that's what some people, that's throwing people off. And I think that's what you really have to understand about the uh, the IPS on these V20s or the, the LG devices in general since they're still using it. It's interesting because they make the best OLED displays on TVs, but they still haven't figured out a way to pull that technology onto their mobile devices. But hey, who knows? Maybe LG might surprise us next couple of months when they release the G6 and all of a sudden it has a curved screen or you know a, a flat OLED screen. Who knows? We'll, we'll, we'll see. Okay, so this phone has a gray feel which kind of shocked me because when i went into the store i opened up the, the the case the battery popped this bad boy open here Let's see if we can do this with one hand uh look at that bam just like that so you know i popped this open and i picked this up and i didn't i i didn't feel good about this now keep this in mind for people that are watching this this is metal. There is no, you know, super paint coating on this to give it a bad feel. You know, there is no just, you know, false advertising. This is pure, I don't know if you can hear that. Pure metal, right? Now, the thing is, you know, they use that military grade type metal and the advantage of that, which is used in the military, is that this bad boy is light right now light doesn't always mean good because what that does is of course it makes it feels like you know it's cheap but the thing is not really I did wish that it had a little bit more weight to it because it was throwing me off I was hearing people talk about this phone and seeing reviews and I'm like well 90% of people are saying this thing feels good in the hand and it feels premium but then one or two people are just like, well, yeah, it feels flimsy. And now I, I, I do see what they're talking about. But here's the magic, though. And I think LG probably nailed this. I don't know how they did this. But, you know, on its own, yes, it doesn't It's kind of light. Like I said, it still has a, it's funny, it just has a premium feel. But it's light, which kind of confuses you. Because you're just like, okay, it's premium, but it's light, right? But what's interesting, and people that are doing this at home, to put this on, because it took me a while, I was struggling in all corners trying to get this thing set. You wanna, once you put it on, you wanna make sure like the left side is sealed first and then just like that, all right? Because the latch is on this side, so just make sure that it's sealed first and then just like that. Here's the magic. Once you put this back cover on, this thing just becomes a cohesive unit. Then the whole thing, that tie device in your hand feels like this super well premium device. Now it makes sense. Now I see where people are saying, you know what, you know, this thing feels good in the hand. It does, it feels amazing. It's not as light as people have just been saying, oh, it's, no, it's, 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 it almost feels the same as the Note 5 to me, just a tad bit lighter. But this, this, this thing has an amazing feel in hand. All right? So that's just um, one thing here. Now, the other cool thing about the V20 is this secondary display. Now, depending on the type of user you are, you'll determine whether this thing is actually, you know, uh, something that you can use, if it's something that comes in handy. I originally thought, you know, it's, to me it's like the S7 Edge with the slide and slide functionality to me, you know, where you just slide in from the edge and you have your shortcuts to weather apps and all of that stuff, right? But I was wrong about this secondary display. I've actually come to rely on display a lot. So let me 
tell you guys why. Now, I tend to, you know, I'm always jumping from apps to apps. And what this does is this allows me to, you know, have apps that are consistent without me searching the device. Now, of course, I always have stuff on my device that, you know, that I add on my own that allows me to, of course, you know, access apps quicker. But this second display that, of course, will show you quick contact so you can contact people. Then, of course, we'll show you, um, you know, uh, anything that's on your calendar. And what I like most of, of all, of course, you guys have seen this, is you can quickly access, boom, your media. All right, so now, like I said, it depends on the type of user you are. The secondary display may not be your thing. It may not be something that you find that much entertaining, but I, um, I'm kind of shocked how much I've come to rely on that secondary display. And I'm still trying to contemplate whether it's now become the top feature on this device for me, or if maybe it falls, maybe number two or number three, uh, depending on what I'm using the device for. Now, there's a lot to this phone, but I really want to talk about some of the things that I think that a lot of people were either were concerned, you know, main uh, top attracts of this phone, and then I want to kind of just talk about my input. So the overall roundup is I think that LG did an excellent job with this device per se. That's just my opinion because I have a priority list, and I think this device kind of just checks off that priority list that I have. Now the problem is that a lot of people are trying to figure out if this is a replacement for them coming from a Note 7. That's a decision you have to make on your own based on what your requirements and your necessities are, what you're looking for a device. However, if you're someone that's you're big on features, you're, you're, you're big on functionality, um, you're big on screen size, then I think the V20 does an excellent job of serving as a replacement and it goes even beyond that because it has features that no other device has like a quad deck, the replaceable battery, the secondary display, that wide angle um, uh, uh, camera feature that comes with this V20 is actually kind of cool as well. So you be the judge, you kind of play around with the phone a little bit and then you know decide if it's something that you know, if, if it's uh, a move that you want to make. Now, as you're looking at my screen, you can see I've kind of customized this device based on how I normally set up my phones. Another thing I like about LG and their UIs is how flexible they can be. So if you notice, I have up to seven shortcuts um, at the bottom of my, my, uh, my screen here. And then even uh, below that for my soft buttons, I can configure the order that I want um, those buttons and then I can, can you can put up to five of those so I would recommend that you add the the uh, the menu collapse button the 5.7 screen this is a big phone so you don't always want to reach up top to pull down your menu when you can just uh, add this to solve button and then you can always use that to collapse your uh, your notification menu which trust me you will come to see that as a great benefit as you start to use the phone another thing I found that was kind of cool was I can use my uh, screenshot as a soft button so with the Samsung devices and with LG and with actually with most most devices if you notice you have to hold down buttons simultaneously to be able to take screenshots and all of that with the LG V20, it made my life a lot easier because all I have to do is just press a button and it will take a screenshot of any page and then I can annotate. Mm, I can, oh wait, what do I do? So you can annotate it on, on your screenshot and then use the share features to, to of course to send it wherever you want or you can just hit that check button and it will save it in your gallery which is kind of cool. LG V20 comes with a 16 megapixel camera 
uh, company with a 8 megapixel wide angle camera. And like I mentioned before, it comes with a 5 megapixel front facing camera. Now, I I, I looked through a couple of re the reviews and, and read some some things, and, and I have to say that the camera on this phone is probably the most controversial aspect of this device. For the simple fact, I've just heard totally different things about this device uh, in terms of output and, 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 and results. So here's the thing. I've been able to take great pictures with the device, and I'll... I'll I'll, I'll post those images at the end of this video so you guys can kind of just judge for yourselves. I really do think it depends on uh, different facets, uh, different, you know, there's a case by case uh, scenario. How, now, um, I don't think that it's better than the Google Pixel, which I think was really Google's primary focus, whereas this phone, LG, put a lot of stuff into it. So, their focus was, was pretty much more spread it out. I I I now I I was hoping to be bad, will kind of come down and be a little harsh on the uh, the camera since I am a, a optical guy. I, I like taking pictures, but to be honest, I it it took actually really good pictures. Now there were some that. I thought could have been better. I compared them to images that I took with my with the S7 Edge and the the Note 5, and most of those pictures were better than the ones that I took on d those devices. Now, of course, if you prefer warmer to cooler uh, tonality of the display, that's that's subjective. But I actually took real good pictures with this device. And I increasingly actually enjoy the wide angle camera. Now, and of course, now the wide angle camera is 8 megapixels. The resolution is not as good as the uh, 16 megapixel main shooter, but you can't almost really tell, especially depending on the situation you're in. So, I will have to to probably give the camera about a B. Uh, now, granted, of course, you know cameras are always getting better, so I would expect. For the cameras on uh, all, all, you know, all three or all, all four cameras on this device to actually be better on the V30 when uh, they they kind of upgrade the device. I still don't know if it's going to be the V30. I'm kind of just speaking out my ass here. So, but yeah, I mean, I have great experience. I I know I heard a lot of people saying that the camera was great for them. They took excellent pictures, and it was better than some of the you know Note 7 devices and the S7 Edge. So I figured if somebody's saying something about images, then I definitely have to put it to the test because I'm a big camera guy. And then I heard a lot of people saying that the camera does just just doesn't quite measure up to the competition. So definitely had to get my hands on it just to see what uh, you know what the the, the controversy was all about. So I, I, I guess in my review, images turned out pretty good. Like I said, I'll, I'll post my image review. Uh, or well, my images at the end of this video so you can kind of just take a look for yourself and for you know really thinking about the consumers and what matters to uh, everyday users so now granted once again this is really geared a lot more for, uh, towards uh, content creators but I think a lot of people who don't really do that much content creating can really appreciate this device so like I said you know drop some comments about if anything that you had about the phone or what your input may be if I'm especially kind of just curious to hear from people coming from Note 7 if you own a Note 7 and how you compare this device to being a replacement device just to, to hear what, you, what your thoughts are so yeah feel free to leave your comments down below and if you liked it give it a thumbs up if you want to see more videos we'll have some more stuff coming up especially considering we can now do a full comparison with this device with other devices. Be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for stuff like that. It's now the it. Go, go, gadget. All right. See you guys.